As I've been following the music scene, I've noticed something interesting about Chris Brown. While we all know him as an international R&B star, he's been making quite a splash in the Afrobeats and I'm a piano world for a while now. And I think his collaborations with African artists, particularly Afrobeats artists, are worth talking about because they're not just one-offs. They show he's really into the genre, particularly Afrobeats. I find CBeezy's journey into Afrobeats fascinating because it's a great example of how music can bring different cultures together. Plus, it's part of this bigger trend I've seen where American artists are embracing African music styles, and I think it is changing music globally, and wow, it serves as an interesting platform for where African music is going to go. In this piece, I want to walk you through some of Chris Brown's key Afrobeats collaborations and how they've changed over time. And I also share my thoughts on what this means for both American and African music scenes. And I also compare what he's doing to other cross-cultural collaborations and think about where Afrobeats might be headed in the global market. Buckle up. This is the no BS version. When I started looking into Chris Brown's Afrobeats collaborations, I was surprised by how many they were and how they've evolved over time as well. Let me walk you through some of the key ones I found. It all seemed to kick off big time in 2019 with Blow My Mind, his collaboration with Davido. This track was a huge hit and for me, it really showed how well Chris Brown could actually blend his R&B style with Afrobeats. Obviously, this wasn't the first time Chris Brown had worked with an Afrobeats artist. We can take it back to 2017 African Bad Gal with Wizkid. A more dancey, party type of tune, but I think what Blow My Mind did was bringing Chris Brown closer to the Afrobeats R&B mix, which has evolved to the sound that he's doing now on some of the latest collaborations, that is. Now what's interesting is this, especially after what Whiskey had done at Drake, these were the times when Afrobeats artists were the ones looking for collaboration, so to speak. It was more like, geez, if I could get a collaboration with one of these guys, this is the step up to penetrating the international market. Interestingly, that very same year, Chris Brown and David O followed Blow My Mind up with Lower Body which was on the extended version of the album Indigo by Chris Brown this time, which just confirmed to me that this wasn't a one-time thing for Chris Brown. This also shows how much respect Chris Brown has for Davido because it wasn't just like, ah, this African guy is just paying me and I'm going to put a verse on his song or whatever. He actually said, yo, I'm going to return the favor and to put him on his, uh, the extended version of Indigo was huge, a huge endorsement for Afrobeats and D Davido himself. And of course, they teamed up again in 2020 on Shopping Spree of Davido's album, A Better Time, which was also with Young Thug. Now in 2022, Chris Brown teamed up with another Nigerian superstar, Wizkid, for Call Me Every Day. What a banger. This track is a great example of how Chris Brown has gotten more comfortable with the Afrobeat sound over time as well. He also added Nobody Has to Know again with Davido, Breezy Deluxe this time. Wow, working formula. It's how it goes. It's worth noting that he wasn't only working with like the super big seasoned Afrobeat stars. Take his remix of Mona Lisa with Loje and Sars. I mean, Loje coming up, showing his talent and everything else to get that Chris Brown remix, bruh. In 2016, Sea Breezy featured on the Your Number remix by AOJ. Your number was a number, bruh. That song was everywhere. And also shows that Chris Brown has had his pulse on Afro beats for a minute. And of course, teaming up with Rema on Time and Affection off of his Raven Roses album. And it was released as a single in 2022. And this was before Calm Down blew up and became this crazy record. He also did the song Diana in 2022 with Fireboy DML and Shinsia off of Fireboy DML's album Playboy. And no, Sea Breezy was not done. In 2023, he decided to double down on it and then did Sensational with Davido and Lojay. And then, mmm, 
with Davido in 2024 and I'm a piano banger. What I find really fascinating about all of uh, Chris Brown's Afro beats and I guess I'm a piano collaborations is how he applies himself like he's working with an artist of similar stature. And I do say that respectfully because he's an international star. What has happened on the African continent many times is especially when African artists go and look for these international collabos, it could go either way. You might get a really lukewarm verse, maybe something recycled from old material the artist doesn't care about or whatever the case may be. But there have been many, many examples of when those artists haven't really sort of given it their all. They haven't respected the African artist. They've just taken the bag and ran with it. With Chris Brown, on the other hand, all his collaborations with African artists sound natural it's not like Chris Brown is forcing himself into a new genre. He studies the sound and he glides on it, you know, and it feels like he's found a style that complements his R&B roots really, really well. Be that as it may, it's not just about making hit songs. I think there's a bigger cultural exchange actually happening here. When I listen to tracks like Sensational or Call Me Every Day, I hear more than just a mix of R&B and afro beats to me it sounds like sea breezy has really embraced the essence of afro beats in particular he's adding his voice but he's also adapting his style to fit the rhythm and the flow of the music and imagine he did like music videos as well call me every day is sitting at 90 million views on youtube and it's probably going to reach 100 million sooner or later it shows that he's grown to respect the genre for what it is and the artists that he's working with from africa from what i can see these collaborations are also having an impact on both sides of the atlantic in the US, you notice more and more people getting into Afro beats and doing challenges or listening to these songs as part of Get Ready With Me videos and all that stuff, uh, in part because of uh, the work that Chris Brown is, has done with some of these African acts because, well, they love him that side. He's introducing the genre to fans who might not have sought it out otherwise or even known about it if he wasn't on a record with an Afrobeat star. On the African side, I think it's also giving our artists out of Africa uh, much more of a platform and uh, international exposure when Chris Brown just does his thing. It's not limited to just to just collaborations because there's this show that he did recently and there's this video of the, like the intro of the show and he's like dancing to Afrobeats pretty much and doing, you know, African style moves. And yes, it went viral. And guess what? He also has one of the baddest Chualabam dance videos you're ever going to find. So Chris Brown has absolutely immersed himself into the culture. I mean, for me, it's really cool how seamlessly R&B and Afro beats blend together in these tracks that he's done. I've been thinking about why that is, and I reckon it's because both genres share some common roots. They both emphasize, you know, rhythm, have soulful melodies, and often deal with similar themes in their lyrics. So, you know, there's, there's points where they intersect for sure. And with that African origin as well as black genres... You know, even if R&B took a detour through America first, you can you can find uh, the synergistic change exchange between the two. I think this natural synergy between the genres is a big part of why Chris Brown's Afrobeats collaborations work so well. It does not sound forced at all, and it feels like a natural evolution of his sound. Now, Chris Brown isn't the only American artist who's been exploring African music styles, and I think it's worth looking at how his approach compares to others. One example that comes to mind is well, Thames, who recently won a Grammy in 2023 for a collaboration with uh, Future. It, it, it just reminds me a bit of uh, Chris Brown's work in that it's a direct collaboration between an, uh, an American and an African artist. But what sets Chris Brown apart, in my view, is the sheer number of collaborations he's done. He's probably nearing 10 at this moment in time. How many American artists can say they've done the same? Of course, in mentioning that, I cannot ignore 
Wizkid's Grammy win for his collaboration with Beyonce on Brown Skin Girl. And she's another great example of a U.S. artist uh, seeking out African artists and working with them. She's actually done entire albums with <laughs> with African artists well represented with Beyonce on the songs as well. But I think what Chris Brown is doing is something unique there. It goes without saying, but obviously Wizkid has worked with both Beyonce and Chris Brown, which I think shows how much our musical worlds are increasingly overlapping between R&B and Afrobeats. What I see as unique about Chris Brown's approach is his consistency. It's not just one or two collaborations like I said, and he's been steadily working with Afrobeats artists for years now. To me, this suggests that he has a way deeper engagement with the genre rather than just jumping on a trend and probably listens to the same stuff that we listen to and goes back wild over it. Looking ahead, I'm curious to see how Chris Brown in particular will continue to engage with Afrobeats. Will we see even deeper collaborations? Maybe entire albums dedicated to this fusion because I think he's got a sound there. But whatever happens, it's clear to me that Afrobeats has secured its place on the global stage and these cross-cultural collaborations have played a significant role in making that happen and they're going to push Afrobeats and then I'm a piano and all that to the world. You tell me, what do you think of Chris Brown's Afrobeats collaborations and how he continues to amplify different artists uh, in Afrobeats? Let me know in the comments below and let's have a healthy discussion. Otherwise, that's it for me. My name is M. Jomoto, son of Zimbabwe, signing out. Peace. Day and day. Very dangerous.